actually went around in Chennai in auto rickshaws to producers' office trying to convince them, let's do Iridhi uh, Sutra. The audiences are far more intelligent, unfortunately today, than the makers are. The moment you try to repeat your success, you're going to falter very badly. In a speech that you gave in Coimbatore, I'm going to begin with that. <laughs> you said, if you look at every step in my career, I have never prepared for it. Uh, I never imagined that this could happen. Uh, can you explain that? Because when I look at your career, it doesn't look like something that, uh, that it looks like something like th that's the opposite actually, like something that's been carefully planned. I think uh, <laughs> it's a, one of the extraordinary questions I've been asked. What I, I stand by what I said in Coimbatore because uh, however much I plan, right. I can't get Mani Ratham to cast me. I, on my debut film, right. I can't get the kind of opportunities that I got right. working with the stalwarts of the country by planning it, right. by conniving to get them to work with me. Those are the things that I am talking about, opportunities that presented themselves. But to my credit, my preparations were uh, right on dot for those opportunities. So be it uh, the film with Mani Ratnam or do be it a series called Seahawks right. or having to play an army or an Air Force officer in Rangde Basanti. Right. If I had to, after getting that opportunity, go and learn how to be a uh, look like an Air Force pilot or have the demure of an Air Force pilot, that would have been, uh, in my opinion, synthetic for the film. Right. But the fact that life had already prepared me for it. I had been with the defense to, for a certain time. I had been a lecturer before. I have you know, been in college and been a, you know, in the lover boy category getting rejected before. Uh, when you withdraw from those experiences, that's what uh, you know, uh, makes it so much more, uh, like I call, uh, uh, when the right opportunity meets the right preparation. So that's what I meant by it. Okay. Even now, even now, to think that a film like Vikram Veda will come to me, I can't design it. I can at best listen to as many scripts and then hope that a story uh, of that caliber is what I'm able to pick up. Right. But to but there is no scientific method right now to put it out like, hey, listen, you know what, guys? This is the kind of story I'm looking forward to do as my next film. Mm -hmm. I want to do a romantic comedy. Does anybody have a romance? That doesn't exist. I right. just have to, uh, unfortunately, go in a very unscientific method and hope that the opportunity presents itself and then uh, capitalize on it. That's what I mean. That's what you mean. Yeah. Okay. Uh, your career has seen its ups and downs. What has been the biggest reality check for you? Before the before the shooting or uh, the actually signing up of uh, Iridhi Sutri, there was a phase in my life when right. whatever I was doing was meeting with a general success. You know, there was no exceptional uh, uh, appreciation or great uh, jump, except that it does look to the audiences that it's been like I did a run, I did a run de Basanti, a guru, and then a, you know, a 13B, and then uh, a three idiots, and then Tanu with Manu. So it does look like it's been a sport. but in between there were films. Where I had lost the uh, the passion uh, to rush out of the house or to think about a story uh, at any given point of time, which is what I'm doing even now when I'm giving an interview to you, one part of my brain is working on my next script, you know, and that excitement I think is evident in my eyes. I had lost that. My wife was the one to point that out for me. So the reality check was, how am I entering into a cruise control phase and in my early 40s? That was not uh, what I had wanted, you know, and. Uh, and then I realized there was a self, uh, there was a self confidence, which was not the right type of self confidence. There was a uh, there's a comfort zone, which was actually m making me decay. So I actually went out of that. Uh, I made it a point to go out of that comfort zone. One of the essential things about that comfort zone was there was enough and more money. Uh, if it was not through films, it was through endorsements. If it right. was not through endorsements, it was through speeches, appearances, whatever. I was able to make money. God's grace. So I first put a stop to that revenue. I said, okay, I'm not doing any films right now. I'm not going to be doing any more endorsements. I'm going to then uh, see if I can get the hunger and the insecurity back. Some kind of rediscovery. Yeah, it was a, let us say, a controlled free fall. Okay. Uh, instead of having, I was smart enough to get into it before it happened in a, in a, in a advertently, right? Right. So that controlled free fall in a sense, going to a state where I got rid of all the corneous layer that was uh, covering my soul. And I really mean it, not in a very philosophical sense. Right. I mean it in the sense that I needed to feel a sense of nervousness. I needed to feel a sense of, oh my God, I'm going to lose it. Okay. Which happened. Thankfully, it happened. I mean, I actually went around in Chennai in auto rickshaws to producers' office trying to convince them, let's do uh, Iridhi Sutra. Not an easy subject to sell, as was uh, all the films that I have done in my life, from Minnale uh, to uh, Iridhi Sutra right. to... Um, uh, you know, Vikram Veda, not an easy concept to sell to producers who are looking to secure their investments. Right. But 
Iridhi Sutra taught me that. I said, you know, I have to bite the bullet. If not somebody else, let me produce it myself. Uh, let me see if I can put my money where my mouth is and get even more nervous in the process. So that phase of four years, which I took off between 2011 to 2015, was the reality check of my life. And it, was, it really taught me a lot. Okay. Uh, yeah, I really wanted to get ahead of, the, ahead of the curve and I think I'm sort of there right now. <laughs> <laughs> You've begun to operate on the, uh, on the principle of quality over quantity. Uh, and that comes with, it, oh, with its own set of risks. So, uh, because every film has to count, because you're putting out fewer films. Do you want to tell us a bit about that? Yeah, Bharadwaj, tell me which actor can afford to do a film that doesn't count in today's day and world. Right. You could have a string of hits behind you and one film that you just did for the sake of um, friendship or money and that brings you down and suddenly your market value goes down to that. I'm not so much concerned about the market value. It's a 20%, 30% give or take in terms of the revenue or, and remuneration. Right. But falling from grace for the audiences that is so discerning today is the biggest risk you take. They're not ready to forgive you. Let me explain that. Practically in a place like Bombay, maybe slightly cheaper in Chennai, but in a place like Bombay, anybody who earns 20 to 25,000 rupees is the only one who can survive there. Right. With a decent, uh, you know, let us say I'm settling down lifestyle in Bombay. If he has to take his family of four to see a movie, it's a minimum expenditure of four to 5,000 rupees. Right? Now that is a family decision. Be it my driver, be it a worker in a you know, software company, whoever. It's a family decision. Like, whose film should I go and see today? This weekend, there's an Amir Khan film releasing, a Shahrukh film releasing, or a Akshay, Akshay Kumar film releasing, or a Maddie's film releasing. The family has to say, let's go to see a Salman Khan film, or, right. uh, or an XYZ's film. And after much deliberation, they decide that the whole family will go and see a particular film or a particular actor's film, depending on the trailers. That investment of 5,000 rupees can either contribute to a phenomenal next one month of people talking about it being appreciated uh, as a family for taking the right decision or it could render either the husband or the wife into the doghouse saying, I told you, you are <laughs> responsible for this. I told you, let's go see that guy's film, you know, and that is a, um, among all the stress in the life, this is another big stress. Right. And that happens more so in Chennai, in Tamil Nadu, because we are more uh, avid film watchers and it happens over there. So if you contribute to that, argument or loss of face, right. as I would like to call it, they're not ready to forgive you. What I mean by that is, they will actually make it a point to go back home, take the director apart in memes and in videos and actually have ended up ruining people's career. I and you wouldn't do that film, it's not a nice film, man, a waste of time. I can right. afford to go because right. it's no skin off my back. Yeah. But if there is somebody who's had to go through a trauma for this, he's going back He's taking out the director's interview or he's taking out the actor's thing and he's just opposing it with other, uh, you know, older films and making a complete meme that's become more popular than the film. Yeah. And we've been privy to st things right, like right, that. Right. So, you can't afford to have a one-off film right now. So, quality over quantity is not a, a decision, it's a survival technique uh, at this moment in every actor's life. And especially with the change, which we'll talk about, with the changing um, face of the audience which are vastly and changing in quantum leaps in the last five years. So, uh, how do you pick your films? Is it instinct or would you say you have a finely honed script sense? Because let's talk about a, a Chanda Mama Durke, which is a sci-fi film. The premise is very exciting because it's about the first Indian astronaut landing on the moon. So, is it like, do you say, oh wow, this looks like a great premise, let's do it? Or do you also have an instinct about the commercial viability of the, of the film? Uh, see, commercial viability today is anybody's guess. Right. Okay, you could make a Tanu Vaj Manu for uh, 6 crores and make 70 crores out of it or you could make a Vikram Veda for a minuscule amount of what the overall recovery is and then you can't base your next film saying Vikram Veda earned 100 crores or let me do a film for 90 crores. That doesn't make sense. Right. So you have to be very sensible with the script and, and say work for the minimum return, uh, you know, return case scenario. How do I select my films has become an evolved decision in the last 4 years. So be it Amazon Prime series, right. be it the kind of movies that I am doing. The first qualification that I do when I hear a script, I don't just jump to it and say, hey, great story, let's do it. It has to get my attention. First and the most important thing is, it should ring in with the state of mind that I am in in my life right now. Okay. Are you able to understand what I'm saying? Like, let, how did Iridhi Sutra... It is the Sutra was in a, in, a, in a frustration stage of my life. And okay. I was actually frustrated. Okay. So what the, and it rings true. That is something that I cannot control. Okay. But I could be in a really happy state and still choose to do a very sad film because maybe that is what my heart is thinking. Like, if too much happiness, ho gaya, let's <laughs> think of some sort of a balance, right? So that 
is a very important aspect that governs how I, s I get attracted to a script. That right. I realize is left to chance. Right. The second things that tangible qualifications that I look for is, does this film's story render itself to the silver screen? Big criteria, which is, does it compel me when I make a trailer out of this or anything to go watch this on a Friday morning if I'm not a Madhavan fan? If I'm not an XYZ fan, does it compel me to say, hey, you know what, I want to see this film on a Friday. Right. I want to see it on the screen. I don't want to see it on a hot star. I don't want to see it on a Wednesday the next week. I don't want to see it after the reviews. I don't want to see it after, uh, you know, uh, or maybe on a, on a pirated delay. I want to see this on the screen on Friday. A great example of that would be a Marathi film called Sairath. Right. On the second day of its release, the pirated versions were <laughs> all out, including on the YouTube. That film went on to recover more than 90 crores in Bombay itself. Right. Forget about the rest of the country. In Bombay itself. Which says that the public is very clear. If they think it is screen worthy, they will go watch it on the screen. So there might be many copies of Bahubali out or many copies of Vikram Veda out. They went and saw it on the screen. What renders itself to the screen is, does it have the aspirational quality of seeing it in Brahmandam? Which is like you see it and you are blown by larger than life characters. Right. They don't have to look superhuman. Arvi was another example. Very normal people with superhuman qualities. Right. Uh, Tanu Ajmanu was something like that. Right. Vikram Veda was something like that. You know, it ha does those do the characters have something like that? Do right. I, do I? You know, there are other films whose examples I don't want to give, who, which are successes. Right. But you make film for two and a half crores and it makes three and a half crores and four and a half crores. It's still considered a super hit. Right. But it's not cinema worthy. It is not something that uh, I would like to go and see on a Friday. Right. The moment that criteria is met, you can be sure that you won't have a disaster in terms of your initial recovery. Right which is a safety belt. The third thing is, is it best to do this as a feature film? Is it best to do it as a web series? Does it render itself to the long format? Am I hurrying it up by trying to make it into a film? Or does this film, am I trying to pull this uh, subject, which actually just a two episode web, uh, web series, into trying to make it into a film? Is there enough content for that? Right. So those are the criteria that I know scientifically uh, that play an important part in me selecting a particular project. So Chanda Mama Durke, despite its grandeur, I can assure you that despite its grandeur of being the first thing on space, which sounds like an attractive thing, it has an amazing uh, human story. Right. The, human, the people involved in that particular story are so based in reality today that you're actually taking it five, 10 years back and pulling the emotions out of the small towns from there and making it land on the moon. Right. That's the kind of uh, character graph, story graph and growth graph that is there. So that's why I'm so excited in the f uh, about a film like that. So what about uh, the Telugu film Savya Sachi that you're doing with yeah. uh, Naga Chaitanya? What kind of uh, calcul I mean, decision goes into accepting something like that? Um, Savya Sachi, again, is screen worthy. Okay. It's, it, there is grandeur, there's grandness to it, and there is a, you know, a, a, an intelligence to the script that is a prerequisite for films, right. which ha it has. And it's a fun a masala film that renders itself to what I call community watching. Okay. If there is a film that I want to see uh, and uh, I, I can afford to see it at home without having the compelling factor of enjoying it with a crowd of people, then I would. Savya Sachi is not one of those. It's one of those films that is like, like a, 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 yeah. And the second thing is, I haven't done a straight Telugu film ever in my life. So this will be my first straight Telugu film. And it was a short commitment, but it was also an uh, opportunity to work with a very young and upcoming team. So it's like a guest role? It is next, almost a guest role, yeah. So, yeah, it's not, the, it's not the main hero or lead right, or right, right. It's a negative deal, if, if anything else. But uh, something that I've always wanted to do. And uh, it's been a long while since I uh, looked not scruffy <laughs> and uh, kind of neat and clean in a film. So, um, I somehow felt that I should indulge myself in something like that. And I'm very excited about it. Do, does uh, learning a new language come easily to you, or, uh, Telugu? Uh, so, my, the competency that I have within English is not there in Hindi. Uh, and definitely not there in Tamil. So, I am restricted uh, in my performances when I do a film that I am not very comfortable with in terms of language. Right. So, even though it might come easy to the uh, untrained eye, I am still restraining myself because I am not able to spontaneously say things uh, <laughs> that would come to my mind that I can do in Hindi and Tamil, yeah. that I can, cannot do in a Malayalam or a Telugu. Telugu, okay. Uh, and it is very important right. uh, in today's world to be able to do that. You said once that I am sad I am no Shah Rukh Khan. I am also very happy that I am not a struggling actor. Mm. 
do you think this has helped you be more adventurous in your choices? Because as Shah Rukh Khan cannot exactly go and say, I'm going to do a web series like Breathe. I think that's changed soon. That'll change uh, very soon. Uh, if you go by examples in, in the West, okay, we have the top leading actors, that's all true. of them being involved right. in the shorter format or the longer format or the smaller <laughs> format, as you can call it. Uh, Bharadwaj, the audiences, let's come to that now. The audiences are far more intelligent, unfortunately today, than the makers are, by and large. Okay. We had a time when the makers were all masters uh, and in English and history and sign like Bharadwaj or I'm sorry, uh, Bala Chandra sir or you know um, Bharadan or all those people they right. were uh, Sangeet Sri Nazam Rao extremely educated so they had the ability to invest their life experiences in their movies and make those characters larger than life. Right. Today somebody from Naikar Pete or somebody from a small town in Trichur is sending me uh, flaws of what really was uh, a giveaway in a film like Irdi Sutra or what is wrong with three idiots. Right. They are able to actually engage you on your level of intelligence and awareness. The breed of makers today are still in their comfort zone. Now, I am going to try and say it and I hope people understand. You always uh, jump back to your comfort zone when things that you are trying out doesn't work out properly. Okay, So, a lot of makers right now finding the changing faces of the audience are jumping back to their comfort zone which is established by the people they worked with earlier and treated as mentors. <laughs> right? right? So, for them to make a film as good as their mentor is good enough. Right. Which is not good enough for the audience today. Because if I have to release Minile today, it might not have the same amount of appreciation as it did when it was released in 2012 because it was aspirational then. Those characters were aspirational then. If that same story were to come out, even if Tanu Manu returns were to come out today after three, uh, three years, I do not think the, recep uh, the reception will be with the same uh, excitement as it was earlier on. That audience has changed. If I have to jump back to my comfort zone and say, let me quickly make a film like Ali Paide or Minil, not realizing that the audiences that saw and appreciated that, who are at best between 14 to 24 then, after 18 years, are now in their late 40s. Right. And for them, it's like, oh, come on, really? It's going to be that. Now, the most important part is that people who are under the impression, with a, and this is another folly of uh, the industry, which is which we, I hope people open their eyes up to. Till very recently, till the mobile uh, data was re, uh, was revealed to the audience, everybody thought the whole film is being driven by the youth. People between 14 <laughs> and 22 are the ones who are going to see the movie. It is not true. The consumption of Bollywood and Tollywood, the maximum number of people who are consuming this, the age group is between 27 and 45. Uh, you mean on the on their phones or tablets or whatever? On any form of consumption. Okay. Is the, the, the indicator is the consumption on the smartphones. Right. But any form of, con it is between 25 to 45. You mean uh, the youth goes to the theatres but the, you're talking about at-home viewing? No, I'm talking about the overall consumption of film entertainment okay. as an entertainment oh. in the country, be it in home or be it in the theatres. The average age group is, or the age band is between 25 to 45. That's 45. interesting. Yes. Yeah. And we all, for the last eight years, we're thinking, youth, youth, let's make it for the 18 year old, 17 year old. They're not compelled to, A, because maybe they're not financially that independent to go and see it themselves. Right. And they don't contribute to a large section of the audience. B and C center, sir, is pushed through in between the 18 to the 45 category. Today, Rajni Khan, sir, is as popular today because his band of followers who are now even in their 60s, are compelled to go and watch it on the first day. So, these, this statistics and data is very important. And so, when you don't make an intelligent enough film, uh, educated enough film, a researched enough film, they take it upon themselves to amuse them themselves while watching the film and taking you apart. Right. That's also an entertain, entertainment right. for them. So you touched on it before. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, that is why I'm saying that uh, it's very, very important to for makers to evolve quickly and realize uh, that, oh, you know what, my last film, it, it, I'm telling you, Pushkar and Gayatri must be thinking today, Vikram Veda is good, it's never going to be part of my comfort zone, let me go into a different, uh, use my talent and try and tell a story with equal, equal aplomb, but a different subject and right. not rely on the success of that right, one. Right. I think that is what is happening. The nervousness with which I go to the set today is uncanny. I okay. mean, I, I, I'm telling you, and I mean it on my heart, if I go on the first day, I have my spot, my assistants and spot by keeping a key night to know look at the audience and look at the people in the studio and tell me if they are laughing at me, if they are raising their eyebrows. Because on the first day of the shoot, I feel naked. L naked, I'm sure. I, I keep thinking, why am I doing this? I can just retire now. I don't have to go to 
to do this again. It's that sort of a fear. Are you saying that it's it's not possible for people to aim to be a Shah Rukh Khan or a Rajni Kant anymore? Is that uh, era gone? Absolutely not. Okay. But the path will not be the same. Okay. Okay. The moment you try to repeat your success, you're going to falter very badly. You've got to find your own... Yeah, uh, so everybody has a... And we were talking about it before the interview, right? right. When you were saying the success of uh, uh, Vikram Veda surprised you. And the, intense, the, in, intent the of, magnitude, the magnitude of, the, of the success. Right. I had no doubts about it. When we had done the film, in fact, the conversation that Sashi and I had a week before the release, like, my dear, it's very complicated. It's, uh, it's, I don't know if they will understand it. I know A centers will get it, but B and C centers, I don't know, man. <laughs> should we put subtitles or should we you know, slow it down? I said, no, no, Sashi. I said, this is your insecurity speaking. When we started making either Iridhi Sutra or Vikram Mera, we were always, I said, let's take a bet today. I'm telling you, this film will run more because of the desire to watch it the second time around as opposed to saying that it, I did not understand it in the first place. And we actually took a bet. And I was very sure the BNC <laughs> Center would actually go for it. What I'm saying is, Bharadwaj, as people who are soaked in the industry, we've already set a yardstick for ourselves yeah. with which we measure the competency of a film. If it is surprising you over and over again, that means your yardstick is off. It's off, yeah. yeah. Is our conditioning in the industry which is compelling us to believe that this might not run because our, f our earlier experiences says so. Right. We are actually s killing our instinct. When you're telling yourself that the film is good, but you're worried for the future, that is the first insecurity. That's a great time to, to tell ourselves that, you know, remove the litmus test, let's find a new set of chemicals to test uh, uh, the contents of a film, which is happening over and over and over right, again. Right, I mean, right. oh, if you see it in Hindi, the reviewers uh, who are seasoned ones are actually finding uh, themselves a, a, at large right now because they don't seem to be able to predict the outcome. Right. And it is hitting uh, it over and over again. What was it like working in a web series? Was it different? Was it the same process? So I thought, and made <laughs> one of the big mistakes I made, I thought it's going to be a honeymoon. <laughs> because, you know, I'm not worried about a Friday night right. or a Friday afternoon collection, nor am I going to be worried about a weekend collection. It's not going to impact my. But I uh, did not make allowances for the kind of commitment it involves and the capability of something like this becoming a success and what it can contribute to your career. Knowing Amazon, I know it will get a proper release. Right. So, I came in there in a huge comfort zone. <laughs> like, you know, I, I, my films had done well. You know, Vikram Eda was I knew was going to be a, a fairly big hit. Irdi Sutra had done well. There was a, a string of hits, so it won't be seen as somebody who's losing a film market and then switching on to television series right. for a career option. Right. But I had underestimated the hard work involved in it. Actually, simply put, first of all, it's eight episodes of 40 to 42 minutes each which means we are talking about close to 380 to 400 minutes <laughs> of content. Right. Unlike films, there has to be a continuum uh, uh, for over a period of 400 minutes as opposed to 120 minutes. What it basically means was, even the, the story was spectacular, okay, it was just beautiful. It didn't render itself to screen, for sure, because I needed so much time to tell the story. It didn't have the ability to open up the frame to make it look. So, I was very sure, web series content. That's but a decision you made when you got the story? No, th uh, that was in my mind and when I got the story, I knew that this story was right for a web series. Okay, so it didn't come to you as a web series? It came to me as a web okay, series. Okay, alright. Yeah, I okay. mean, I think the director wanted to make it as a film. film. Right. And our producer Vikram Malhotra convinced him and said it renders itself to the long format, let's right. do it that okay, way. Okay. So, when it came to me, it was web series, so I said, yeah, you know, it fits the slot. It, is not, it does not lack content for it to be made into a film in terms of the uh, the quality of the quantity of the content, right. and at the same time, it had enough and more content for making into a crisp eight-episode series. Right? right. But you know, we were shooting over a period of forty-five days, and I realized that my performance and everybody's performance, as a matter of fact, has to be so consistent from the first to the eighth episode that even though you're shooting the climax scenes one look on the first day, and you're shooting the first episode's last scene on the 48th day, you had to keep a track of how your expressions were evolving through the series. Right? Right. So for the first time, I was actually keeping physical notes. <laughs> that this is where I left the scene off, there is a possibility that I might get edited in this expression or this expression or this expression. So the scene that this connects to in the next time, and on top of that it is linear and non-linear on top of that. So it has to connect to this scene and this is how the eyes were at that point in time. Right. The, the permutations and the combinations and the connectors were like crazy. And I wasn't so sure 
of what I was doing. Right. I knew I was doing something special while doing it. Uh, I knew that we were onto something big if it turns out correctly. What I did not imagine is if it turned out perfectly the way you'd imagine it, that will go to a completely different level. Right. So I don't want to be presumptuous and say it, but I'm going to say it anyways. I've already done it, always done it in my life. I haven't seen a, a series finale which is better than what? Breathe in any of my international web series that I have seen. Fantastic. It, yeah, and when you see it, and I want you to see it uh, as yeah. soon as possible, you will realize that you couldn't have designed it. You couldn't have designed it to have the kind of impact right. it did. Merely. But when you do it to the right intents and you have the right people doing it, the, the you know the flair of an editor suddenly matches with that of a cameraman, suddenly matches that of the background score and becomes a rainbow. Right. You know, and uh, you cannot tangibly create it on paper, which is phenomenal. You, you, you casually brush aside the fact that maybe a Minale or an Alaypai, they might not work today. But last year, you know, you, you put out a picture of yourself after a shower on the web and, and, and as they say, it, it kind of broke the internet. Yeah. Uh, you know, and some of the comments by by the women made me blush. So it was <laughs> yeah, kind yeah. of uh, so you know. So there's still a demand for this good-looking actor in a romantic role. I think what makes you not want to keep repeating that space every second film when you when you know when you know that there is a it, you just got proof. Yeah, you, you know you're very kind, but <laughs> I don't want to be carried away. See, the thing is to look like that in one frame, it's easy. <laughs> to look like that throughout the film and to have the same. Um, uh, <laughs> Um, uh, let us say, I'm trying to find the right word here, but to find the same enthusiasm in your body to carry off uh, that youthful look might not be there. Uh, and it's not there, definitely not there with me right now. I can't run as fast as I could run when I was in Manila. I don't think I can dance like that anymore. <laughs> not that my dancing skills was anything to write home about. But, you know, the overall package should be convincing enough. Yes, I do think that there is an opportunity for me to do romantic films now. I need to really look into uh, romance. I've been dying to, but you know, I did a see, I did a, in, I did an ad film with Vidya Balan, and I thought Vidya Balan and I make a phenomenal pair because of the way we were in our, in our age at that time. But that ad film did so well for us in 30 seconds uh, that we should do that they did a series of that. Yeah. And after that, they, we could never do a film together <laughs> because it was easy to maintain that level of intensity of romance for 30 seconds. <laughs> when we're getting a script, right. it was a totally different story. So as much as I would like to think that I'm still alive by them in a worthy, my intelligence tells me that you know, uh, do romance if you have to by all means, or made it, make it age appropriate because that's what people will appreciate. Right, right. <laughs> a couple of years ago, you said there was a huge difference between the Bollywood and the Tamil film industries. Do you think that's still the case? Yeah, I, I maintain that. Okay. Um, uh, not having to point fingers or anything, it's not a blame factor, but uh, the conditioning of the Tamil film industry did not allow makers and producers and investors to believe that films like a, uh, a Sala Khadu, uh, sorry, Irdi Sutra or, you know, uh, Vikramedha viable options. They were saying, let's make small films or let's make really big films. Right. But the Hindi film uh, industry had been kicked so hard on their teeth in terms of almost being driven to bankruptcy with, uh, you know, years that had done disastrous, uh, you know, quickly made them realize that the audiences have changed. It's very, very important for them to understand. So they started making the smaller films. Tanu Vajmanu would never have gotten made if somebody like Vikram Malhotra didn't realize the potential of it. It had been rejected and was in the cans for a year and a half before we managed to get into the theaters. So three idiots changed all that. There was always, there were phases, uh, if I may explain, take the liberty to do it. You know, in 2002 roughly, there's a film like uh, Dil Chata and Lagan that came. And at that time, there were great directors who were running, ruling the roost. And those two films came. They changed the face right. of the audiences who said, if you can make this, keep making things like this. Right. So those stalwart directors suddenly lost their market. Then there came another phase in 2005 and 2006 when films like Rang De Basanti and the others came. Right. Right. Then these guys who had come up during that time, the new era directors, after a period of five years, suddenly found themselves without uh, relevant work because now that uh, this, the next set of directors and audiences were ready. Now that, then you had uh, three idiots come in within the next three years and suddenly those directors became irrelevant. Now that, if you look at the span with which these directors are, and you know, producers were becoming irrelevant, the, the, the time gaps is reducing because you're saying, I don't want to put that much hard work into content and research and let's just do quickly and make it, some continue and right. make it, but yet others were being rendered, uh, you know, obsolete. So when I say that there was a huge difference is they realized that was happening. They realized that is the Hindi film industry. Hindi film industry. 
the Tamil industry was very happy. So there were producers who were there and then suddenly they were not there. There were production houses that were there and suddenly they were not there. There were big corporates coming in with lots of money and suddenly they were not there. So though the modus operandi was becoming more modern, the content and the people creating that content were not evolving hard enough. And that was the biggest difference that I was seeing between Tamil and Hindi. So if you look at the last eight years, the uh, historical hit, things that go into the archives are very few and far between. Whereas in, 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 the, in, this, in the Tamil film industry. Okay. And that used to, we used to be the, the, the content leaders in right. the country. People looked to us for, right. for directions. So that became less and less. The, the extent of hits where people celebrated it for over 100 days almost actually became non-existent. I mean, we were trying our best to say 100 days. Minnale was one of my films that I remember it went for 100 days. Run was close to that. Right. After that, true 100 days where people celebrated the film were few and far between. Okay. So, people trying to make those kind of changes are now coming in. In the last 3-4 years, I see the kind of films that are being made and it's wonderful. At one point of time, Malayalam industry was ahead of us. Right. The kind of content they were making. So, I really think that we are one of the best in the, in the world in terms of creating content. In, you're again talking about the Tamil industry? I'm only talking about the Tamil industry. Okay. I think we are one of the best in the world. If we are able to, you know, the kind of nuances we are able to bring out to cinema, very few people can consistently like we used to. And, and you, you keep track of what's happening here and all that? Uh, yes, I do. I don't say I will wa I watch all the films, but I, I, I mean, I keep track of it because this is where I swim. Right. <laughs> this is my market. I need to know it. So yeah. again, to uh, you know, you kind of swim in both markets. So right. that's 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 why I was kind of uh, you know. Uh, it's the rules are the same. Okay. Thankfully, maybe earlier on it was different. Right now, the two rules are the same. I can assure you that I, as my personal friends in the industry, the top actors are now saying, "What the hell do I do next?" What is it that's not going to at least bring me down from where I am? What do I have to do next? So that fear was not there uh, to a great extent in the, in the few years before this. And you're saying that's a good thing? It's the best thing that can happen. You know, <laughs> your audiences are changing. Right. You know, one guy who's yelling, whose father is yelling, eh, tai, oh, whatever, whatever, his son is like, why are you yelling like this? I can't handle the film. <laughs> and then he's walking. I don't have three hours to waste. Right. And suddenly he will be like, oh, I'm in Ranga. So, oh, disasters of this magnitude did not exist earlier, which is what is happening right now. So it's a short, short sign for us to change. So another really interesting thing on the Hindi Tamil thing that I found is, uh, is, is it's a bit of a one-off, but it's interesting to talk about Danush's acceptance in Ranjana mm. as not a Kamalasan and Ekduje Kele kind of South Indian speaking like Pigeon Hindi kind of thing, but as a regular North Indian character. Mm. Do you think audiences are, are kind of right now they're saying, I don't care where you're from, as long as you deliver, you give me uh, like good work, I'm not going to differentiate from where you're from? Absolutely. That, that is, uh, we've been discussing this right now. So all the preconceived notions about what a basic requirement for acceptance, either in the form of a hero's look or character or personality or language, don't exist anymore at all. Okay. So there is no need for uh, uh, Day to become a um, uh, worldwide rage. Forget about Tamil rage. Worldwide, right? Right, right. So, where is the language barrier there? Where is the uh, you know the your your background there? Right. Ranjana also, but uh, he was somebody who was a Tamilian, who was a South Indian, in Ranjana. No. Yeah. Yeah, he's a I, South I Indian. Forget, I forgot. Right, he's okay. a South Indian, but he born and brought up in uh, Varanasi. Uh, Varanasi. Okay, yeah. okay. But he's still a South Indian. Yeah, so yeah. They, that was a director's way of justifying the accent. Accent, yeah, right. right. That's the yeah, only yeah. thing. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, it wasn't, uh, uh, there, was, there was no fear of acceptance at all. I don't think Kamal sir or Rajini sir got accepted or their films did not work because of their background. Right. Because if you look at Bombay, who's a Hindi speaking guy? Yeah. I mean, which of them are not from outside Bombay or who's uh, actual Hindi speaking Lucknowi um, Nawabi uh, son or a Bihari boy, everybody is from a different state. Right. Um, and they are all contributing. So if you take Sanjay Leela Bansali or you take Deepika Padukon or you take Shah Rukh, Salman, Ajay, they are all from different parts of the country that have come in. Maybe Hindi is their first language. Right. Thankfully, uh, it's an area that I grew up in. So my Hindi doesn't have a hint of a South Indian to it. And secondly, I had a distinct advantage because I had an already established market in Hindi before I became a Tamil actor. So. Uh, I had the, I was running the risk of either being said you are actually from Bombay aren't you in Chennai and from Chennai guys saying you know Bombay guys saying you are actually a Madrasi aren't you so it's uh, but I don't think the audience cares. audience cares anymore. Yeah.
Let, let's end with some nostalgia. Okay. Uh, your, your first major screen role, Shanti, 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 the Kannada film, this is the 20th year. Oh, really? Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. uh, it was 1998. Uh, 98. So, this is the 20th year. Yeah. So, it's yeah. been 20 years. Uh, what's the difference between the Mary of then and the, uh, and the Madhavan today? Uh, 20 kilos. <laughs> 20 <laughs> years ago, I think. <laughs> Easily. Uh, Shanti, Shanti, Shanti was, uh, you know, my first... Uh, Actually, my first screen appearance was a, Tamil, a Hindi series right. called. This, I think the major. Israt ki subah. Ha, but you yeah. know, an extended role yeah. uh, would have been in Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. When Abbas was like a like a rock star. Yeah, star yeah, 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 yeah. There was no fear of, of the outcome for me. My life wasn't dependent on it. In fact, I think right up till run, I didn't realize that my life depended on cinema. Okay. I always thought there's this. You know, I'll do it while I can. Fight the secondary revenue and move out, which is very strange. So, if you ask me what is the most predominant memory of 18 years ago, I was always having this constant out-of-body experiences. I'm like, what, Maniratnam called me? Really? <laughs> it's all amusement, okay? So, when I was there in front of him, there was no fear. It was still in my mind, like, are you kidding me? <laughs> is this really happening? <laughs> While I'm shooting it, I'm surrounded by P.C. Sriram, A.R. Rahman, Sabu Cyril, this Shalini, Maniratnam. I mean, the the who's and who of the Indian film industry were there and I was the center of attraction doing my scene. My first scene was where I had to do a single shot scene of looking for my wife Shakti in a house and you know, PC Sriram at that time, no dollies and stuff, was following me on a crane. <laughs> it was an out of body experience. It's like, what? And Mani sir saying okay to the first shot I was like, huh? Really? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, somewhere in between I think the, uh, the desire to want to keep doing this again was the only reason I started accepting more Tamil films. So when somebody came and said, do a film called Yannavale, it's going to take you to the B and C centers. I was gullible enough to think, oh, let's do that. But somewhere, my survival instinct said, step back and say, hey, you know what? These kind of stories are what others think you should do. But Minnale is the kind of story that I think you should do for yourself. And Mani sir had told me that. He said, no, make four films for others, make one for yourself. So when I took Minnale and another nostalgic memory, Gautam and I would actually, after the super success of Alai Paide, I would sit behind on his motorcycle and go from producer to producer, <laughs> saying, you know, I want to do this as my next film. And they'll say, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, they'll take the script. And, and he had a bound script. He had a fully written script at that time. And uh, they would say, good, good. And then they'll say, Gautam, one second, can I speak to Madhavan? And then they'll say, here's an advance. Do a film with such director. We've already signed him up. We can do this later on. <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, sir, I'm, please understand. I want to do it with Gautam. He's, uh, you know, he, we are able to speak the same language. I mean, nobody would agree till Dr. Murli came. And uh, I distinctly remember this, sitting in his office and we were talking on a table like this. And he said, who's the director? I said, he, he's agreed to do the film because he kind of somewhere believed in my ability. And so Dr. Murli says, uh, who's the director? I said, he's a new guy, sir, Gautam Menon. Who's a cameraman? I said, sir, new guy, sir, Rajshika. Oh, uh, music director, a new gentleman by the name of Harris Jaraj. Uh, uh, art director, a new guy, sir, name is Rajivan. <laughs> Action? Yes, yeah, a new guy. His name is Peter Haynes. <laughs> A heroine, new girl, new girl, sir. You know, you're going to do all the You want to do all the experiment, you know. <laughs> so, and I, I could say his point because it was a completely new Anu, the costume designer. Or, or I think it was, she did part of it and part of it was done by Sunanda. Everybody was new. And they all became industry leaders over a period of time. Right. You know? That was the beauty of that, uh, that particular movie. Uh, so, yeah, great nostalgic memories. 20 years, it doesn't feel that it's become any easier for sure. I'm driving a better car and I'm living in a better house. Um, but I think in terms of fear for survival, it's far more than it far was more. 20 years ago. <laughs> you worked with many major filmmakers. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to name five and ask you about some of the things thing or things that you learned from them. Mm. Uh, let's begin with the obvious uh, Mani Ratnam. Uh, there is a, 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 a demon-like commitment to his uh, to his uh, venture that I've never seen anybody else be. He's very well read. He's quiet, but he's intense. And uh, one of the things that I learned about Mani sir is you can never prepare enough for a scene that you have to do with Mani sir. He finds the magic uh, 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 in the entire atmosphere that is somewhere between pure confidence and insecurity. You know, and slight insecurity. So all the shots that he ever say okay to were the ones that I'm not so sure I've done correctly. Like there's somewhere I think must have, you know, I lost it, there's an, uh, you know, 
and he's and you see that there is magic in there. I would prepare the scene completely and work it out to the uh, to the pixels in terms of how I want to do it, and it's uh, too synthetic. So that is one thing about him that I would never forget. He was he's he's a driven man, and uh, you don't know what will suddenly be the reason for his being motivated. Is that that's something that you've imbibed as well. It's very difficult to imbibe. It's a quality that you can only admire and hope to reach. Um, uh, very difficult for us to be in. He's just uh, his. Let's look at the obvious, tangible quality. The kind of genres that he's achieved success in, from a Trida Trida to a Roja to a Nayak and to an Anjali. That's the kind of genres that no director in the world has managed to find an expertise in. And that is Mani Ratnam. He's. Overall knowledge and understanding of human beings is, is phenomenal. Anand Del Rai. Oh, he's another sponge. He he's very 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 good with artists. You know, um, Anand Rai's set is always a pleasant party to go with. There is no stress. Nobody is yelling and screaming and making things happen and out of place. He handles disaster in a different manner. And then those who are driven. You by mean Mani Ratnam yells and screams? Oh, Mani sir is a different beast on the set, for okay. sure. <laughs> oh, any, anybody who's been to work with him will know. Uh, anything but the quiet demo that he presents at an interview. Uh, and uh, people are scared, paranoid, and with with good reason too. I mean, he produces results like that. With Anand Rai, it's exactly the opposite. With <laughs> Raju Rani, it's exactly the opposite. Right. Um, so, for, with actors, for instance, Anand Rai is exceptional. He will never. Micromanage your acting, or he will not even give you a general direction. He just talks to you, and he gives you a hint. And if you are smart enough, and he will only select people who are smart enough to understand him. And if you are going wrong, he'll just tell you some things, and you will realize that it's a general conversation, but it has a great relevance to the shot that they are going to do next. And you have to be—that's a nice game that he plays. Which is, I mean, I'm realizing that as I say, I tell you this right now. But you'll be sitting there talking about some irrelevant subject, and you'll say, you know. But sometimes, you know, it's just enough to feel the presence. You know, you'll just say, you don't have to even. Uh, and then, and it's all like, is he talking about what I'll do the next thing? Maybe you know, and they go back and do it, and it works out. You know, right. that's. And I realize that he does that on a consistent level. So, very, very charming uh, set to be in. Uh, so yeah, it, for me, it's uh, something that I look forward to. Uh, Ritu Purnar Ghosh, with whom you did just one film, Sunglass. Mm, uh, I see, it was a very brief uh, appearance and brief association. Um, I knew he was trying hard uh, to reach back and uh, grab what he had managed to do earlier. There was a sort of um, uh, there was a sort of fear that he was not being committed enough. Uh, to the pro in fact while he was doing ours he was also doing another film with Amitabh Bachchan he was right. also do so i wasn't expecting a director of his caliber to be able to split himself completely uh, in doing three other projects at the same time so there was a little bit of worry as far as i was concerned but i could make out that he's a phenomenal filmmaker he's just uh, as a as a director he was right up there right but i think it was also just a few years before a couple of three four years before he passed away yeah, yeah sad thing yeah, yeah. Rajkumar Hirani, you mentioned a bit about yeah. him. One of those guys who prepares the script and the process of filmmaking right down to the last details. All these T's are crossed and the I's are dotted. Uh, there is no uh, so to synopsize Raju Hirani for you. In all his five films, there has never been a deleted scene. Wow. Yeah. So if you go to the DVDs, they'll never find deleted scene because we never shot. Right. He's being him primarily being an editor. He writes. What all has to be written to that particular scene, and then he he makes an essence of it, and then he compacts it so that one word will give you uh, the connectivity to the next scene or word. And it's beautiful to uh, to see that pattern flow when you're doing the characters. There's a freedom as an actor that uh, you don't necessarily have to worry about because he casts correctly, right. and once you're in place, uh, he'll by and large allows you a uh, big bandwidth to perform in, and. Uh, they're not very. If you look at Raju Hirani's film, they're not highly intense character-driven films. They're screenplay-driven, story-driven. Right. So you have the liberty to, you know, go uh, one way higher or lower than that, and it still works and without being a fault. Right. So and a lovely guy. So great guy to work with. And uh, Kamala Hassan. Even I mean, even oh. though you've acted in, you know, the films that he wrote rather than directed. Mm. Oh my God! This, this is so he's a completely different. Uh, uh, power of knowledge, a powerhouse of knowledge, as I would call it. Uh, his commitment to cinema is so absolute that it is almost frightening. 
I don't think anybody can be that committed. He has no life above, apart from cinema. You know what I mean? You know what I mean. He, he, you won't see him out partying or being a, a parent or, or, you know, unless compelled to, to do an endorsement or anything else. But right. all his life, it's only cinema. You talk to him, right. I dare you to have a conversation that doesn't, uh, you know, <laughs> spiral back to cinema. So that sort of passion and romance that he has for this medium is, un, uh, you know, is very evident when you work for him as well. What shocked me when I was doing Unbased Cinema was, I thought that I'm also, um, I'm not as good as him, but at least I have a certain uh, 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 innocence with me, with which I could do, and he appreciated that. So that been many times while during rehearsals, during Unbased Cinema, or even uh, 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 the last film that we did together. Man Mother Number. Man Mother Number, where I would say, uh, he would look at it, he'll, he'll do the rehearsal, and then he'll come back and he'll look at me, and then we'll do the take. And in the take, I'll look in and say, what happened? I said, I said, sir, I thought the rehearsal was better you, when you looked at, ah, hey, let's do one more. That I didn't expect Kamal sir to do. I didn't expect that I would say it to him because it was <laughs> blasphemy to tell him how to do work. But I learned that day that you can never be so committed to, you know, so involved and so good that you can't take suggestions from people who are like nobodies. Right. And I, as I was concerned, I was a nobody while I was doing Anbisham. But the amount of respect he gave me, the amount of space he gave me to perform, I got the award for the best actor for Anbhi Sivam Nash, the state award for right. best actor. How magnanimous can that get? So if you ask me why I do a film like Atanu Vajmanu or a Vikram Veda or Iridhi Sutru where I'm taking the back seat as a main lead, it is because that is what I learned from Kamal sir. When the film has to do well, just take a back seat, let the guy who's supposed to be. Amir does that. Right. He does that in Rangde Basanti, he does it in Three Idiots. When somebody has to perform, they have to perform. Sir. So there was no insecurity. All the insecurity as I had as an actor was thrown out because of somebody like Kamal sir. Finally, Madhavan, who's the one person that's inspired you the most from within the industry and from without? Okay, so with uh, no disrespect to anybody, but uh, one of the gentlemen that I can't imagine being like and I want to be like that because he's as relevant today as he was when he started off his career, which is I think the biggest blessing you can ask in this industry because the fall of grace <laughs> is the biggest curse That's that right. you have to handle. And you spoke about that a lot. Yes, yeah. and I think Mr. Amitabh Bachchan, the, the, the ability with which he's managed to do age-appropriate roles, the fact that he's still giving young actors a run for their money, he's maintained his own dignity and style. He is one man who, who inspires me greatly. I mean, I'm not prone to falling at people's feet ever, um, except my parents. I'm <laughs> a different, uh, you know, my whole idea. But with Amiji and that family, there is a, uh, you know, I would, I, with all my heart, uh, touch his feet because uh, I really uh, wish to be a fraction of what he can be. Professionally? Professionally, absolutely. And personally? Um, personally, my dad. My dad. Uh, actually, uh, it's not. My dad and mom are, you know, great inspirations simply because I'm an actor. Uh, I, uh, you know, have all the trappings of uh, a celebrity with me. And they have a sense of withdrawal, at the same time, a great pride and dignity with, uh, with which they live about who I am. So, they would never want to miss uh, a cue because they're my parents. And if I'm on, on the airport and I'm being ushered in because I'm creating a chaos because of the fact, they'll say, no, you go, we'll come on the line. <laughs> he will never take, I can't buy him a car, I can't buy him, my mother will not take jewelry. They're very happy uh, <laughs> and content, you know. And I hopefully at that age, if I'm able to live with that level of contentment, I'd consider myself extremely successful. Fantastic. And all the best for Breathe. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Hey guys, this is Madhavan. And if you like this conversation, please subscribe to Film Companion South. <laughs>